But is it fair to say you do believe in a universalism in the sense of uh, that everyone will ultimately freely choose to be won over by the love of God? I don't know. Do you? Well, do you? It's interesting because I don't think Jesus did. Because Jesus talks about hell. He talks about a fire that won't go out, torment that's unending. Um, and, you know, certainly in your book, you say that no one can resist God's pursuit forever because God's love will eventually melt. That is the a perspective hearts. of, I mean, there has been that strand within the Christian tradition. There are people who have said, oh, yeah, given enough time, God will win everybody over. What a, what a beautiful thought, but I don't, I don't know. And but, to sort of stake a claim that that's going to happen, how would anybody know that? I mean, obviously, you outline different positions in the book. Yes. So you say some people think this. Yes. Some yes. people think this. Yes. And here's here's now. The, I suppose what struck me when I read it was that it it is that position of everyone ultimately being one, which is the one you kind of major on that you give the most time to in your chapter. Does God get what oh, God mm-hmm, wants? Mm-hmm. And and so just to, to quote from a couple of bits there, um, uh, on one page you say, "Will all the ends of the earth come as God has decided, or only some?" Will all feast, as is promised in Psalm 22, or only a few? Will everybody be given a new heart or only a limited number of people? Will God, in the end, settle saying, well, I tried, I gave it my best shot, and sometimes you just have to be okay with failure? Now, when I read that, although they're phrased as questions, I I, I obviously think... Well, Rob obviously doesn't believe that God <laughs> fails and God settles yeah. back and says, oh, well, I, you know, I tried, but didn't work. I, y- it comes out that you're not agnostic on this, Rob. It comes out that you do believe everyone will ultimately be saved. Of course, you acknowledge that's just one in a variety of options. Sure. But, it, but it sounds like that's the one you prefer or, or you, you're most convinced by. Do you long for that to happen? Oh, yes. Uh, well, Adrian. Well, look. Do you, do you long for it to happen? I, I'm not a Christian it? who believes that only a few will be saved. That's for sure. Um, I think there are, and and that's one of the positions that I think you kind of react against in the book. You know, this idea that billions oh, yeah, and billions yeah. of people are going to end up yeah. in hell, um, and that the that the minority will be saved. But I think there's a different question about whether you believe the majority will be saved or all. And so, I, I don't feel that my reading of the scripture would allow me to say uh, that hell will be empty. I don't. I don't see that. And my observation. From what I see in our world right now is I see lots of people choosing hell. And I actually think it's incredibly important that we hold on to hell. And if you're asking me, I see lots of people resisting God's love right now, resisting Christ right now. And my assumption is they are free to resist when they die. And uh, I talk about the momentum theory. You tell a lie, you have to tell another lie. That our choices have very real consequences and we can build a head of steam in a particular direction and we can build a head of steam in a direction away from God. So uh, I see lots of people who it looks clearly like they're choosing hell now. Their consequences are spreading hell to others. And, and I would kind of assume that they'll continue on in that direction. But, well, I guess this is the thing that many people are feeling a bit frustrated by, Rob, is that they, they feel like they've read you making statements in this book. And then when you've talked about the book afterwards, they feel you, you've backpedaled or at least soft pedaled what you've actually said about it because it i have to confess when i read the book without any knowledge that you'd be coming into my studio um i thought wow rob bell's come out as a universalist now it's why did i come away with that impression if if you are really just setting out a range of options and you're not really saying you uh, are firmly in any camp i mean is is that being a bit disingenuous Rob? i think in the book i talk about hell now and hell later i see people choosing hell now i i, I live with the assumption that people will choose hell when they die. There's this picture in Revelation of this new creation, new heaven and new earth. Earth and heaven become one, this beautiful city, and there are people outside of it. But and do you believe picture, ultimately everyone will okay, be one? Okay, this is what's really fascinating Will they me. be one? <laughs> I know, I know w- I'm asking What question. is the... Do you know? No, I don't. Do you know? Well, I think <laughs> Jesus knew, uh, and Jesus said that there'll be those that he would send away.